Hey there, mathletes. Well, let's get into section 3.2 and continue with uh, this conversation of derivatives. So we're going to look at just basic differentiation rules and then at the end, uh, rates of change. So in the last section, we looked at how to find the derivative and we used that limit process. So although we could do it, it's not the most efficient way to find a derivative. You know, what are you going to do if you've got like, you know, really high powers or a lot of trig functions or exponential functions like that limit definition? I mean, you can work your way through it, but um, man, it can be really intense. So for the rest of this chapter, uh, we're going to be looking at different differentiation rules so that that limit can be avoided, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's look at the constant rule. So the derivative of a constant function is zero. That is, if c is a real number, then the derivative of that c, whatever number that is, is going to equal zero. So example one, find each derivative. Huh, well, eight is a constant, so that's derivative is zero. Part B, pi is a constant, so that derivative is zero. Part C, f of t equals root three. Well, root three is a constant, so that derivative is zero. And D, f of x equals k e squared, where k is a constant. Well, that means its derivative is a zero because k and e squared are both constants. All right. That was a whole lot of fun, wasn't it? Didn't even have to use that limit definition once. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at what happens when you've got powers involved. So if n is a rational number, then the function f of x equals x to the n is differentiable, and <clears throat> the derivative of that x to the n equals n times x to the n minus 1. So you pull your exponent down, and then you decrease it by one to give you the new exponent. And that is how the power rule is going to work. <coughs> okay, so let's try that one out. So find the derivative. So instead of using that limit definition, um, let's use the power rule. You can use the limit definition if you want to. It's not gonna be wrong. Um, I would only expect you to use it when it tells you to. Like I would have to say, use the limit definition of the derivative to find da 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 da. It doesn't say that with this, so you can use any rule you want as long as it applies. So the power rule here is going to be really nice because you just pull the exponent down so the 4 comes down, and then you decrease the exponent by 1 to 3, and that's it. And the crowd goes wild saying, yay. All right, anyway, let's move on. Gotta love mathematicians with a sense of humor. Okay, anyway, the derivative of x to the 10th. So pull the 10 down, decrease the power by one. And there you go. All right, part C, this can be rewritten as x to the half. Well, it's got a, a power on it now, so now you can still use the, the power rule even though it's not a whole number. Like it doesn't say it had to be a whole number, it just has to be rational, and one half definitely is. So pull the power down, decrease the exponent by one, so it's one half x to the negative one half. Now, this is not the only way to write this answer, so you do have to be aware that this can be rewritten. So, first of all, the negative exponent can be flipped down. So one over two x to the half. And then the fraction exponent can be rewritten as a radical. So one over two root x. 
Now I get students all the time going, well, which one do I do? Well, that's what that word or means. You can do any of the three. Now be aware that if it's a multiple choice question on a quiz or an exam, you know, if I ask you for the derivative and you have this written, but this is the, one of the choices, you know, you gotta realize, hey, I can rewrite this into that and choose this as my answer. So you gotta remember, you know, a lot of your properties on how you can rewrite stuff. So, but if it's free response, you know, I don't care which one of these it is, just pick your favorite. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on to part D. You can rewrite that one as well, because the power rule says it has to be x to the whatever, not one over x to the, so this guy can't be inside anything. It can't be in a radical. It can't be in a denominator. It can't be in a trig function. It can't be in an exponent itself. It has to be just x to the something. So this is not in the correct format yet. So you got to rewrite it. We'll flip it. So it would be x to the negative third. Well, now it's in the correct format. It's x to the something. So pull your power down and then decrease the power by one. So that would be a negative four. And again, you can rewrite this in another way. You can flip the x to the negative four. You can put it down underneath. Just don't take the three because the three is not affected by the exponent, just the x is. So negative three over x to the fourth. And again, people could just go, well, which one do I put? Well, that's that. <laughs> again, that's what the word or means. You can put either one, just pick your favorite. But again, be aware that you can go back and forth. So the book, what it likes to do is it kind of likes to write everything with positive exponents uh, and it doesn't like to leave fractional exponents. So it changes it back into radicals. Typically, that's kind of what I usually go for too, um, but it doesn't mean you have to. Just as long as it's simplified, you're, you're usually pretty good to go. Okay, so let's stop this video here and we'll continue uh, with some other basic rules.